There's a lot of talk at the moment about Tesla struggling in terms of price cuts, demand decreases and profit margins falling. And the stock price is definitely suffering because of this. Tesla was one of the first EV companies to actually start going mainstream and getting attention. They've done really well so far with their mission of accelerating the world's transition to sustainable energy. So many people have taken the plunge to switch to an electric vehicle or just even have electric vehicles now on their radar because of Tesla. But of course, they're not quite there on fully achieving their mission statement just yet. It's estimated that right now, one in every 250 cars out on the road are electric. Now, this may be a little bit off, of course, but that equates to about 2.2% of the entire car market share being electric vehicles. So 2.2%, that is a really small chunk. So clearly there's a long way to go yet. But even so, according to the International Energy Agency, the global market share when looking at new cars sold in 2022 was 14%. This was up from 9% in 21 and 5% in 2020. It's a growing market. And actually one in every seven cars in Q1 2023 was an electric vehicle. And in growing markets, you want to invest into companies that can really benefit from that growth and are going to do well. But what Tesla have done is create a new market where previously competition didn't really exist. But now legacy automotive companies and brand new companies that we've never heard of are coming up and they are producing pretty attractive EVs as well. This is a good thing for Tesla's overall mission. We want them to have the most demand, therefore the most sales, because ultimately that converts into a higher stock price, which benefits us as an investor. Now market share is just the percentage of sales of a particular product, or service that a company has in a given market. It's calculated by dividing the company sales by the total sales of all companies in that market. If you take battery electric cars only, so these are all electric, then Tesla is far ahead of anybody else. They currently sit at a market share of about 23.6%. However, if you then look at battery all electric, so BEVs, and you add that to hybrid plug-in cars, you will actually see that BYD is in the number one spot with a market share of 21.3% and then Tesla comes in second with a market share of 16.5%. Having said this, Tesla's Model Y vehicle is the best selling car globally. But if you just look at US market share, you would see that Tesla's market share in the US, in the EV market, has actually fallen ever so slightly. It's gone from 62% in Q1 to 59% in Q2. However, this is still the majority. 59% is still taking the majority of the market share. But also, this is probably just because the US EV market is growing. It grew by 50% year over year in Q2. So like I said earlier, there are more companies getting onto the scene. So we would expect that Tesla's market share does drop ever so slightly, but the company is still selling more cars overall. So just because the market share might dip a little bit in different quarters over different markets, it doesn't mean that Tesla vehicles are not selling well. And it really depends on which area of the world you're looking at as to whether Tesla is the market share leader. In North America, they have a market share of about 60%, and that's because that's the market they started in. They have a brand reputation there, and they've been going for a lot longer, so they've been able to build this up over time. In Europe, the market share is pretty good, but it's not as high as it is in the US. And this is the market where Volkswagen and BMW are really big players, but will they still be as big in years to come when the EV market grows and will they be able to keep up with their own EV vehicles? And then in China, the Tesla market share sits around 10%. One reason for this is that Tesla have been in China for a lot less time than they've been in the US and they've been selling vehicles for only a few years. And the Chinese market comes with a lot of challenges for Tesla, like supply chain issues, political issues between the two countries, but they're doing a good job. They have built their Gigafactory in Shanghai, which is really positive, but even so, BYD is definitely a big player over there. What I just wanna quickly note is that if you're looking at market share and you're not seeing Tesla as the leader, definitely look to see how they are ranking market share. Are they looking at battery electric vehicles only, 
or are they including the hybrid plugins as well? Because if they are factoring in hybrid plugins, it's not really true EVs and you want to take that at face value for sure. So Tesla is still really the winner for market share in terms of full EVs. And the important thing here is that Tesla are the ones making good profit on their vehicles. Now that can't be said for all the other legacy automotive companies and other companies out there making EVs. Also other factors do come into this stuff in terms of market share, including supply chain issues like I just alluded to in China. But if there is a significant bottleneck in the process, for example, getting battery grade lithium or producing the chips that go into the vehicles. If Tesla is struggling to get these for production, then of course their production output will go down. And therefore extrapolating that out could result in a decrease in market share. This stuff is not easy to predict and it's dependent and influenced by macroeconomic situations. But what Tesla is doing in order to put themselves far away from bottlenecks as possible and relying on other supply chains and other people is that they are doing a lot of stuff in-house and they are looking to bring everything in-house for the future. For example, their lithium refinery factory. They want to be able to refine their own battery grade lithium because that is a big bottleneck in the supply chain. I did make a video all about that, so I'll try and link it up here now. But also, aside from this, producing their own batteries, their own chips, so on and so forth. Doing all this will really help because what it will mean is that they are not held up in production by things outside of their control. They will be fully in control, which is really, really important. So if market share is seemingly not a cause for concern, what about the plummeting demand? What about the plummeting profit margins and the price cuts popping up left, right and center. Let's talk about that really quickly. Tesla have cut prices on their vehicles in the past. This is not the first time that this is happening, but recently you've probably seen the news that the Model Y long range and performance vehicles in China have had price cuts. Does this mean that the demand is no longer there in that market? And should we expect to see the market share for Tesla decrease further. I did go through a few reasons as to why this might be happening in China specifically in my latest video. So again, I'll try and link that up here. But China is a massive market and it's important for Tesla to try and grab hold as much market share in that region of the world as they possibly can. So I think that pricing their vehicles lower and sort of causing a price war between themselves, BYD and other players in the area is actually a, quite a smart thing to do because hopefully what that will do is translate into higher sale volumes and it gives them somewhat of a cost advantage. And I think it makes sense. What they are doing is they are looking long-term. They are not so worried about the short-term profits on these vehicles because we'll get onto this in a minute, but Tesla is not just laser focused on making money on their vehicles and that's all they care about. By pricing the vehicles lower in China and in other areas of the world, it becomes more attractive for people to actually buy Tesla vehicles. And what does that do? Well, that helps them get towards their overall mission of um, accelerating the transition to sustainable energy. And also it helps them get towards their goal of producing 20 million vehicles per year. And there are a few other things that I'll touch on in a minute as to why they might want to be selling as many vehicles as possible. So following these price cuts that we saw in China, we've now also had the news that Tesla are releasing new versions of their Model S and their Model X vehicles, which are the most expensive ones. These new versions will be $10,000 cheaper than the original vehicle, I believe. Definitely check that out. But they will have slight differences in terms of their range and things like that. But again, that is really attractive. Attractive pricing, a cost advantage. Hopefully what that will mean is more people will now take the plunge and actually purchase a Tesla that they've been wanting to or join the EV market because now they are able to because they can afford these really good, high quality cars that will last them many, many years for a cheaper price. What this is doing is this is Tesla putting significant pressure on their competitors because Tesla have the flexibility with their high profit margins to be able to price cut their vehicles without it really impacting them financially too much. But what this now does is it opens up other companies to have to start cutting their prices as well. And the question is, can those other companies cut the prices on their vehicles without them being badly 
financially impacted. I'm not too sure. A lot of other companies are already actually losing money on their EVs. So they don't really have the pricing power that Tesla does. But to summarize on a more generalized level, I don't believe that price cuts solely means that the demand has fallen and therefore less sales and that Tesla is starting to decline as a company. I don't believe that it's a linear relationship where cutting prices means X and then X means Y and so on and so forth. I believe that there are a lot of factors that come into this. There are usually quite clear reasons if you look at it from a long-term perspective as to why they would want to cut their prices. Tesla cars have extremely good profit margins because of their constant innovation and improvement in manufacturing with a vertically integrated process. And even with price cuts, which do bring the profit margin and the gross margins down, they are still market leading margins. And Tesla is generating a lot of profit from their car business. But like we just said, these price cuts result in increased volume sales and a more competitive advantage as the cars then become more affordable to more of the public. And this is especially important during macroeconomic turbulent times. Also to keep growing market share until the point that they reach saturation, they need to stay ahead of competition, but also they need to be able to keep up with demand, meaning the production ability needs to be massive. They have to be able to scale up when necessary. It's no good to have the demand there, but not be able to meet it with the supply. This is where I believe Tesla are pretty impressive because they are constantly innovating. They are expanding. They are focusing on automation in their manufacturing process. So they are doing everything that they can do to make sure that they can meet the demand that they have. And of course, when I say constantly expanding, what I mean by that is they are expanding their current factories and they are looking to build more gigafactories in the future as well. Also, I imagine that Tesla's market share could increase if and when they release that affordable compact EV. I believe the Model 2 hatchback is the name that's given to this at the moment. If this does get priced at about $25,000, then it will be the cheapest car Tesla has. And this will hopefully allow them to capture a different area of the EV market. I alluded to this in my last video, but when you're getting panicked about a potential market share decrease, price cuts, less demand, profit margins falling, and you're seeing the stock price plummeting, which it's definitely been doing over the last few days, it's not had a good time out there. One thing that you should really do is not look at the news articles. Try and actually zoom out and do your own research and then think about whether you believe that this is short term and it's very justified or do you believe that this is truly the end of Tesla and they're no longer a good investment for you? And zoom out, look at the bigger picture. And I'm really bored of hearing myself say this, but I don't really know how else to actually say this point. But Tesla is not just a car company. They are doing so much more and their mission is so much bigger than just producing, producing their current vehicles. The EVs that they sell is just one area of their business. And although it's the largest part of Tesla right now, in decades to come, I don't believe this will be the case. It's just a small cog in the driving wheel. Is that even the saying? I don't know. It's just a small cog for them to help them get to their overall mission. And it's one that is working very well right now. But also they have a growing energy business and this in itself has lots of different parts to it with their mega packs being what I believe will really drive the growth of this forward. And they are working on cars that drive themselves, a supercomputer, a robo taxi fleet, a humanoid robot, so on. We don't even know some of the things that they'll probably do in the future. And these are all other diversified revenue streams for now and for the future. Some of these things aren't currently in place right now. Like we don't have a humanoid robot being sold. We don't have a robo taxi fleet, but they could happen in the future. And I think it's really, really helpful and important to think long-term about your investments. And with the robo taxi fleet as well, this kind of ties into the price cuts because it makes sense for Tesla to sell as many vehicles as they can because these vehicles are the ones on the road collecting the data in order for them to get their FSD as best as possible to then eventually have a robo taxi fleet. And like I've said in other videos, I believe the idea will be to switch the um, customer owned Teslas into potential robo taxi fleet parts and they will need as many as possible to do that. And some of these are really ambitious. So you have to kind of try to understand whether you believe that they are actually possible. But with Tesla, 
is a very volatile stock, especially in the short term. So when you're getting panicked about all these headlines, just try and zoom out and think long term. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you want to stay up to date with what I'm doing with Tesla stock in my portfolio and you want to speak to myself and other like minded people, then consider joining the Patreon, which will give you access to the Discord community as well. I'll leave a link to that in the description. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time in another video.